Live and direct from Planet of Queens, New York. Rodrigo Salazar, Soccer Senseis, live from Upper 90. It's a beautiful place in Astoria, Queens. And we are joined by Melissa Ortiz, who is a soccer blogger. And she's a Olympic athlete, and she's a former NWSL player as well. Melissa, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Soccer Senseis. Thank you. Tell us about yourself. Okay. I'm a former professional soccer player. Uh, played for the Columbia National Team for Columbia. Yeah, uh, yeah. for eight years, and okay. I've been to two Olympics, a U20 World Cup where we made the semis, uh, and I also played uh, D2 soccer here in the USA in Boca Raton, Florida. Wow. Okay. So it's been a, quite a career. My knees are aching. <laughs> so how did you get into the sport? So I started playing soccer because I have two older brothers, and okay. ever since I was just starting to walk, uh, I would play th with the soccer ball in the house because I would always see my brothers playing. Okay. And then of course they would always bring me to the around the neighborhood and play pick up with the with the kids with our neighbors. Nice. And then from there on, you know, my parents always supported me and pushed me. They saw I had talent since I was little. I was very athletic, uh, whether I played soccer, basketball, volleyball, lacrosse, whatever it was. Okay. Because uh, I was I was born and raised in West Palm Beach, Florida. I played like if I was on a U12. If I was 12 years old, I played on a U14 team, so I always played two years up until eventually I, I got to my own age group, which was like a 16-year-old team. But yeah, it was it was a great experience growing up and playing soccer in Florida, and I got my shot to the Columbia national team. How did that happen? Because obviously you're based in Florida, but yeah. Columbia national team is based in Columbia. Did right. you reach out to you, or did you reach out to them, or like how did that? Yeah, that's a good inspire? question. A lot of people ask and. Actually, there's a lot of Colombian Americans like me that live here in the USA. Okay. Uh, it was pure luck because uh, one summer my mom sent me to a summer camp at Duke University. Yes. Um, so they had a soccer summer camp and this one coach really liked how I played. And uh, his name is Mario Rincon and to this day I still talk to him. So I was only 16. Shout out to Mario. Yeah, hey Mario. Come with that, Mike. And I was only 16, and when I was playing in college, he had you know, heard about me through the grapevines that I was doing really well and scoring goals. And it was that same year that he had met the, who was now, who is now the ex-ex head coach of the Columbia national team. Okay. So he reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in, in uh, trying out for the Columbia women's national team? He's like, the U20s are probably gonna have a, a, a tournament coming up soon and I said absolutely you know although I was born and raised in Florida uh, my parents always you know raised my brothers and I in such a Colombian culture and a Colombian household there's always salsa, arepas, everything yes. so for me it was a, a very prideful moment to just say absolutely I'll go try out for Colombia without any thinking you know so thinking, hopped okay. on a plane uh, my freshman year of college missed about a month of of school and yeah. uh, made the, the roster and from there out built my way up from the U20s all the way to Mayores to the full national team. Nice. Yeah. So what was that like? You, you, you Olympics as well? Like, you... Yeah. So um, my first tournament with Colombia was the U20 uh, Women's World Cup in Germany. Nice. Uh, we were definitely the underdogs uh, but we made it all the way to the semifinals and it was just a wow moment because for Colombia who came off the grid, off the map to do so well. Mm -hmm. Um, when we arrived back in Bogota, like all the people, like we had people waiting for us at the airport and like wow. that for women's soccer, especially That's this great. was 2010, like this, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this is eight years ago. Uh, that for women's soccer was just like, what? Like this is so cool. And that's how we really started getting women's soccer going in, in Colombia. We started turning, turning heads, turning eyes. And then after that, I went back to college, went back to Colombia in the summers mm -hmm. uh, to train with the national team. Nice. And then made it to the final roster of 18 girls to the um, 2012 London Olympics. Yeah, so I went there and then uh, after that finished college, um, played professionally, and then with the national team, played Copa America, played Juegos Centroamericanos, which is a Central American yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. We played in Veracruz, we got silver medal, which was good. Um, and then went to the 2016 uh, Rio Olympics, but uh, I went that year as an alternate. I just got back from an Achilles so, surgery. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. And uh, what, what's it like to have an actual like league? Now there's a league in in, uh, in uh, Colombia, and there's a league also in, in Mexico, which right. is doing really well for, for female soccer. Like, yeah. what's that like? Is, you know, I mean, so I got to play a latter end of the first year of, of the league, mm -hmm. uh, Di Mayor. I played with Cucuta Deportivo, which had their main base or sede in Bogota. Okay. Um, it was. It was an awesome feeling to be part of something that we built because uh, it was never, that was the first women's pro league in Colombia in history. 
so it was, it was a great experience, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of doubts right now. Um, currently, uh, the major and like even my teammates that are living in Colombia right now who are playing in the league, they don't even know if that league is going to go on next year. So it's kind of uh, iffy right now. Um, you know, the pay is not good, obviously, um, but it was a building block. However, it, it has potential to grow. Um, that's if the major and if the federation, you know, that's if they support it. Um, they need to invest and there needs to just be better facilities, there needs to be better pay, you know, better support from the men's teams that are linked with the women's teams. Sounds a lot like what's going on in NWSL as well. Yeah, a bit a bit of that at a much like larger Smaller. or like, no, but I'm saying like a, NWSL is like gold compared to the league in Colombia, so. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I know I, the player Ada Hegkerberger who yeah. won the Ballon d'Or, the yeah. first female to right. win it, right? Yes. We talk, let's talk, start with the, what the Martin Solveig self said to her right. about twerking. Can we talk about that? Like, yeah, um, so she received, a, she's the first female soccer player. Big she's, deal. She's Norwegian to Big receive deal. the Ballon d'Or. And like right away, after she gave this incredible speech about girls, you know, going for their dreams, not being scared to play soccer or whatever, mm -hmm. He wanted to make a joke out of it right away and said, uh, you know, do you know how to twerk or something? So yeah. like that, she, the way that she responded was like on point, like yeah. luckily, like thank God she was just like, no, and walked away. That's great, yeah. Yeah, um, but that's just a little snip of what it's like to be a female footballer in today's age. Like, and uh, thank God it was like on live television so that people could see what we have to go through. But for her, it, you know, I don't understand why he would even joke about that in that moment. Like, I don't even care if you're joking about, I don't know, like chickens. I don't know who this or, guy is. You know, like, he's not matter. even a DW. I mean, yeah, whatever, yeah. Whatever, Come on, really? Like, yeah. you had a chance to be on an international stage. Yeah. You're, you're like, Does he like, I mean, you're really gonna go say that to a, right. to a woman? Like, yeah. you say that to your sister or your mother? Like, it's never it's so amazing. And like, like, he apologized, but at the same time, his apology was just not, not heartfelt really. at all. I didn't think it was acceptable. Like, yeah, I felt like, oh, it's a big deal, so let me go out and apologize. Like, he thought people were going to be like, oh, it's cool. No, but no, right. it's not cool anymore. No. Definitely not cool. No. Definitely not cool. I know you, you wanted mm -hmm. to, at some point, start like an like, academy for young girls to play and stuff. You talk about like what, how it's important to, to do that and how they can look up to you and, and whatnot like, as a player. You right. Know, like, you, um, you, you so a few years ago, I hosted a soccer clinic in Florida along with two other teammates on the Columbia National Team. Okay. Uh, we did a summer camp. Uh, we had over 80 kids go to it and it was really successful. It was an awesome experience for them too because we would give out like jerseys and signed jerseys and cool stuff like that. Um, and now that I just moved to New York City, uh, I've been doing individual just sessions with, with kids in the city. And uh, yeah, I'd love to keep growing like my roster of select individuals throughout the, throughout the week. You know, I'd love to just keep on inspiring girls to go for their dreams. I know for me growing up here in the USA, being Latina, I never really had anybody to look up to yeah. um, other than male soccer player, so I was like, wow, Messi's so sick, or whoever, you know? Even Mia Hamm, you're like, she's like this yeah. one thing, and everything else, you're like, who else? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like, I had a poster of Mia Hamm in my room, of course, yeah. but I never had that identity connection where I could say, like, I could be her, you know what I mean? Like, it was just, it was just different. Okay. Uh, I always, I had, I looked up to male soccer players, which isn't right, and like, in today's day and age, it's awesome that, like, young girls can look at female players and be like, wow, I could be, you know, like Ada, or I could be like Melissa, or I could be like Alex Morgan, or, yeah. you know, it's just, it's awesome. So my idea is just to keep on inspiring little girls to, I should say little girls, but girl, youth players in general. Players, yeah, in general yeah. yeah, Like that so girl who, who reached out to uh, Steph Curry and said, oh yeah, yeah. You, what's, I mean, I, 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 like, I want to play, I want to play basketball too, you know right. I mean? He reached out and said, you know what, yeah. you're right. Yeah. He, he has a beautiful daughter. Exactly. Like, that, that should have already been, yeah. but the important thing is that now it is. Now it's, I think it's, they sell both Under Armour uh, sneakers for, for girls and boys. Exactly, yeah, now there's yeah. cleats coming out for girls and boys. Man, I, I grew up playing in like boys cleats, so. It's such a cool progress now. And it's not just like, you know, like, I mean, you, you, don't want, you want your own thing, not just something pink. You want something that's like cool, yeah. but, you know, like. Yeah, something badass, something badass. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So now the important thing, let's talk about your teams. Okay. okay. You're a Liverpool fan? I'm a Liverpool fan. Okay. Yep. Uh, I've been a Liverpool fan wow. since, <laughs> nah. since, gosh, maybe eight years old. I, I can't even remember. Uh, okay. But my two older brothers, um, we grew up, you know, just 
fighting for who's gonna do the dishes. So one of the ways that we would you know, call, I'm not doing the dishes tonight, was okay. play a game of FIFA. So we got into Everything really- Everything should be, should be uh, done like that. Yeah, right? Even like, you know, it's, even like world leaders. You know what, yeah, mm, let's, nah, let's just play FIFA. Let's do FIFA. And yeah. then, then let's I know, I know. Let's <laughs> Seriously, trade agreement, let's do FIFA. <laughs> what else yeah. is more, more important than FIFA? Come on. Really? I know, right? Come on. So uh, at that time, you know, we would play with all these Premier League teams, with La Liga teams, whatever. And my brother, my eldest brother's an Arsenal fan, the middle brother. Arsenal. Yeah. Owners. My, my uh, middle brother's a Newcastle fan. And Ooh. so obviously I had to choose a team. That team was not going to be theirs. No, okay. And at the time you. I really loved Steven Gerrard. Uh, mm -hmm. So I went with Liverpool. And since then, just always loved Liverpool. And I have like a an awesome connection every time I go to, whether it's a pub or if it, in West Palm as well, there, there was Liverpool Bar, okay. downtown Lake Worth. Uh, so it's cool because you, you know how it is, even with Arsenal fans, like you already feel that like sense of community. The family, so, community, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And the only contention we have now is that you're a Boca fan and I'm actually a River fan. Yeah. And we're still celebrating the Copa Libertadores. I know. Beautiful <laughs> triumph. It was a great game. Like I can't, you couldn't have, I mean, you could have wished for a better game if Boca won, but if it, was it, was a good, in, it was a good final. If it was played in Buenos Aires, it would have been a lot better, yeah. but we'll take it. Yeah. yeah. I thought, you know, from the beginning, it's like, this is Boca's game, it's yeah. done. However, it how about uh, Gago? Did you see Gago? Yeah, yeah, of course. He um, tore his Achilles for the third time. So Same. that's, yeah. He went to from, he went to Achilles tear, retore the Achilles that following year, to an ACL tear that following year, and now just retore his Achilles. Uh, or maybe his other side, but I mean that's four major injuries within like a that's three, four year span, which is man. I feel like he's such a talented player, but I think it's it's oh man, that's so sad. That's a shame. Yeah. But, you know, we never we never wish bad on any uh, opposing players. You know, it's a rivalry, but it's always right. respect. So yeah. yeah. Wow. So. Tell us about where people can, can follow you on on, on social media and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, uh, you can follow me, Melissa Ortiz5 on Instagram. I also have Twitter and, and Facebook fan page. I have a really good following um, okay. on all three. And then I started a website, thesoccerblogger.com, uh, which her. every week I'm, I'm doing videos talking about whether it's Premier League games coming up or La Liga or women's soccer. Obviously the Women's World Cup coming up around the corner. Thanks for joining us, Melissa. All and, right. Uh, we'll, you'll, we'll have you on again, definitely. Cool. Talking Thanks about... for having me on the show. Definitely. <laughs> cheers, oh, by the way, cheers. By, yeah, cheers. By the way, she's drinking mate. Mate, you know, she's mate. keeping it really like, messy. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, really messy, really, really Suarez. Yeah. So, drinking coffee. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us on Soccer Sensei. We'll see you next week.